Our guest, Mike Jocelyn, founder of Jocelyn Landis Insurance, and he is the Kanye Chamber Person of the Year. When I mention that, he kind of grimaces a little bit. <laughs> uh, but you do this, I think, for the community, and the one thing I want to talk about first is Spark and how far the city has come uh, with the stadium, with the sports complex, with the, the track, and, and all of the things that have been going on in the past 10 years. So kind of take us back uh, on that and what has happened and what has been accomplished. Well, geez, I, I think of going back to the early 2000s and being on the school board when we actually had the old municipal stadium condemned. And at that a depression era, <laughs> sure, d- mm-hmm. built during the WPA, right? right. And uh, at that time, we were looking at uh, we might even have to cancel all the home football games because we didn't have a place, obviously, to play. And uh, so at, at that time, we had to start thinking outside the box and, and raising revenues. And, and we thought, well, let's try to do this from a private enterprise standpoint right. originally. And, and kind of in background, there is at that time, there were a lot of schools in the county that were building beautiful new schools with uh, the stadiums and, and all of that sort of thing included in them, taxpayer supported. Very very true. Jefferson was going through it. Lakeside mm-hmm. went through it, all new facilities. Geneva. Yeah. And, and you know, we were looking at uh, no track. So all of our track meets were away. And I felt sorry for the track kids who never were able to have a home meet in front right. of their fans and their parents and stuff like that. Um, our, our tennis conditions were deplorable. We were playing at Liberty Street, which were in need of repair on a constant basis year after year. So um, the SPARK committee or the Care for Kids committee that was formed really uh, took a, a, a new approach to let's get a whole new complete set of facilities on the same location. And that's uh, what, what prompted the SPARK project. And it's kind of been but slow but surely it, as, as the money comes in, how, how did that all happen? I mean, the fundraising and everything. Did you know something about everybody? That <laughs> no, I actually, you know, there's two people that I I can point to directly and and say that without them uh, being the backbone of the care for committee and the Spark Foundation or uh, or Spark Committee, uh, this project never would have happened. And that was Kent Houston mm-hmm. and Jerry Amy. And those two individuals t- took control. They took the reins, and and uh, they let us let us down the path we're on now. Uh, it started with a simple uh, set of bleachers. Once the the uh, old municipal stadium was demolished, you know, it was more or less a set of bleachers to get us going. Right. You know, to have some stands, and then from that point on, uh, uh, once we got into our architectural drawings, and then we started to garner support from the community and more and more contributions from the community, uh, then it turned into a full-fledged uh, uh, project. But like you say, it was built a little bit at a time. You had the bleachers, you had, uh, you know, where the food was sold, that was that repla- was replaced, Definitely. ticket window. And that, uh, and Bob, that was all because of funds. I mean, we realized we had to do it in phases, uh, and, and we, you know, we, it was being done with private donations, but we did have to go get loans at times and then pay them with our private right. donations. So, you know, it was a it was a tough battle from the get-go. Um, proud to say now, looking back, <laughs> that everything worked out yes, great. Yes, it did. And, uh, you know, we're to the point now where, you know, we've got the beautiful track facility. Of course, uh, the, the football stadium's done. And uh, now we're at the point where we're looking at the new Riccardi tennis courts. And uh, hopefully this spring, they'll or this summer, maybe even, they'll be able to play their first uh, matches on those courts. So we've come a long way. Yes, definitely. And the, the track, I can remember my son um, was on the track team. That was 1998. And I think they had to, everybody in the county, I think, pretty much played at uh, Pima Tuming Valley because they That's were right. the only ones that had a, had a decent track. That's right. That's exactly right. Uh, they had all their, their meets there, and they had the lights, of course, mm-hmm. for at night. But, yeah, uh, you're right. It was sad for for those kids during that era that sure. didn't get those home meets. That always bothered me. Um, so we, so you all, we have got, we've got the track and the, the tennis courts. There's more coming. So tell me, well, what's more is coming? Well, we still need a field house there. And of course that was the crown jewel and the most expensive part of the whole project. We had a price tag of a million dollars on that building. Um, we're gonna tr- probably have to scale that down a little bit 
Uh, for example, we had a full weight facility in there. We'll probably eliminate that weight room facility. It makes more sense for the kids to work out at the high school. Sure. And that will cut our costs there a little so bit. So what else is going to be in there? It'll be mainly uh, full locker rooms, guests and visitors, and then some coaching offices. So um, that campaign is underway. There are people donating to it now. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully in the near future we'll announce that, hey, we're ready to break ground on that new facility. It's kind of embarrassing for the city of Conneaut for a while there when the, the guest teams would be, okay, this is the Conneaut Stadium. Oh, boy. And uh, dress in your school buses. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah you're, you're exactly right. It was, it was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that led to uh, what we see now mm -hmm. and the efforts that, that everyone put together. But, yeah, holy cow. And even, even the home team going in those locker rooms under the stadium, remember yeah. those? You know, with the bats flying around the ceiling and the... I, I try to stay away from there as much as possible. After I went to school, which was a while ago... The one light bulb <laughs> hanging in the middle of the room. <laughs> yeah, terrible conditions. It might have been yeah. a good place for some kind of a suspense movie or something. Well, but... you know, let's put our plug in, too, for Municipal Stadium. I mean, yeah. built during a WPA, that's... that. It, that building really did its... It did. Served its time in Conneaut. And, uh, of course, you know, it was a landmark. It was terrible to have to tear it down when we did. But, uh, you know... But it was 70 years old. Reached a point where we had no choice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So put that into perspective a little bit for the community, for people coming into Conneaut and uh, maybe looking for a place to, to live. There's quality of life. You know, you want certain things... And one of them is good schools and, and good school facilities. Well, and of course, you know, uh, the SPARK, the C in SPARK stands for community. Mm -hmm. And that was important to our Care for Committee group. We, we realized that if we were going to use private funds to do this capital campaign project, then we need to make it available to the community. And so I, I don't know if you've been there or how often. I know you're a runner, mm -hmm. but that track is always being used by people in the community going around and yes. going around. And, and we're hoping the same thing with the tennis courts when we get done. That you'll drive down Route 20 and you'll see, you know, couples or people with kids playing tennis on a regular basis. So community was a big emphasis on that whole project. Just just to share my thought process a little bit, which is kind of scary, uh, is that I was out riding my bicycle one day, and it was when the the track was just put in, and I was going to go home and run down you know my streets and stuff, and so I thought I'd stop and just see what it looks like. And while I'm standing there looking at it, I'm thinking, why don't they just run on this? How about that? Yeah, right? Right. Just all of a sudden dawned right. on me. Yeah, soft on your feet. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, it's used by hundreds of people, and I think. Uh, I think the more we get done there, the more people that will go there. Um, I, I really think the stadium, that, that football field, is one of the nicest grass fields mm -hmm. in northeast Ohio. And uh, kudos to Matt Kitchen and the Conneaut High School and Lori over at uh, Conneaut High School for the, all that they do there to keep that. Because it's a lot of work. Right. Um, you know, people think you put that turf field in at a million dollars and you're done. <laughs> Well, heck, every 10, 15 years, you got to replace that turf yeah. since another million dollars. But in contrast, there's also a lot of work and physical labor and man hours that go into keeping that grass field up, too. So, you know, uh, I love that field. Yeah. I love that. Well, field. as one who's shot photographs of, of the games, which is not easy to do, right. um, the lighting there is, is pretty good. You're right. You're right. So... Uh, yeah, we're excited about that project. Um, I can't wait for the tennis course to get finished. And then I'm really excited to dig that first shovel of dirt for that uh, field house. Yeah. That would be the crown jewel there. What about parking? Is there anything that... Um, you know, I try to stay away from this subject from everyone <laughs> because, you know, parking's bad there. Yeah. And I always, in a joking way, I always say, you know, the Rose Bowl's in a neighborhood too. Right. It's in a residential neighborhood. And they still get 100,000 people in there. Yeah. The you know, I, it's... A, I get it, but it's well. Just... Sometimes people they don't want to walk a certain distance, but if it was at a mall and they were walking it, it wouldn't matter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a matter of attitude, you know. You're there for a fun night, right? Right. I mean, yeah. If you got to walk a block or two blocks, it's good. Um, we are there are improvements that are going to be made to parking, where we'll we'll actually get in some diagonal parking along. Uh, one of the streets, hopefully, and we're, we're working with the city on that. So there will be some small improvements mm -hmm. to parking, but outside of building a parking deck somewhere, you know, you're always mm -hmm. going to have that residential parking there. Right. 
Something else that uh, you kind of impacted was you became president of the Conneaut Foundation. So we're taking care of the schools and some and some of that with Spark. The rest of the community, uh, th- there was a change uh, in the direction for the Conneaut Foundation, more into economic improvement of the city. Yeah, uh, it, it really was. We, we took a little bit of a different direction, and Bob, we just... We came to a conclusion that we felt we could do a little bit more with the money that we were giving away each year. So we, we set our sights on <clears throat> growth and job investment mm-hmm. in the community. And that's the that's the path we've taken at least for the next few years and see if we can get a handle on what we're doing. We've partnered with the Port Authority and the city uh, to team up and try to get a uh, uh, economic development firm involved, which yes. we've done and uh, they're going to help with five or six major projects that are coming to Conneaut and of course they're going to market Conneaut and hope that we can bring attract new business to the area as well. Which is something that really hasn't happened before. You'd have like a city manager that's supposed to do that as well as take care of chuck holes and, and everything else. Wow. Um, I can remember Geneva for a while, their assistant city manager had that role and, and there have been people in Ashtabula but Conneaut it's, uh, oh, get- you know, it's like you have to come knock on our door. And, and your point, your point is exactly right. You take our city manager, who has to run the daily operations of the city. He's lucky if he can get five to ten hours a week to work on economic mm-hmm. development. The most important, you know, thing that affects any city is economic development. You know, you don't want to be without it. Right. So, and it's and it can't be done on the cheap. By the way, economic development is expensive. You know, so. Our thinking was, you know, let's each chip some money in together because we, uh, as a standalone uh, committee, we couldn't afford to fund the whole thing up mm-hmm. front. So everybody, was it 20000 20000 each, yeah. And, and we're hoping to go at least a three-year commitment to get, to yeah. get a, a solid foothold on this thing. Um, so, you know, he, he's lucky to put five or ten hours a week in the economic development. Now... For what he's accomplished with that five to ten hours a week is amazing. Mm-hmm. The guy's a worker, mm-hmm. and he's a go-getter. <laughs> and I joke with him. I tell him uh, he's so persistent at times he's annoying, and that's what makes him good. <laughs> yeah. Because he doesn't take no for an answer, and this is what we need in leadership. Because economic development is it's based on who you know and how much you can pressure them into getting what you want done in our little small corner of the world, in the political world. Um, so this, the economic firm we look for is we want someone with connections in Columbus so we can get our, you know, our voices can be heard when we need funds and grants mm-hmm. and so forth. But uh, going back to your point about uh, in the past, you know, I'm a believer that, you know, I grew up through the steel mill promise and the Saturn plant, yeah. Saturn plant promise. And looking back to me, I always felt that we've never had our infrastructure in place to accommodate those businesses. And I believe that. We, you know, they had the mega power watt drop down at the dock company. We have no access road to 658 acres of Canadian national property. Um, They're on Lake We have no high pressure gas line to, to feed those plants with gas. But now, we will soon. <laughs> now, yeah, now we're starting to see, uh, and 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 I and kudos to our city manager because he understands how it works. You get your infrastructure in place, then you go calling, and you market yourself. And we have such beautiful resources. I wanted to talk about that. We've got 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> so, yep. what what is this from? Where do they when they look at Conneaut? Are they say do we are we looking good as far as? Uh, having the facilities for economic progress I think our I think our out, outlook is excellent excellent I really do I mean we're, our ducks are in a row and uh, with our city leadership and, and combining with the port I think we're, you're gonna see some big things in the near future Mike Jocelyn thank you very much thanks Bob